Hi, my name is Mike Scott, Applications Engineer for PCB Piezotronics. And in this video, I'd like to show you how to calibrate some of the more challenging sensors that we see in the vibration field. High temperature, integral hardline cable, accelerometers or volometers that you find on gas and steam turbines or any high temperature rotating equipment. Um, these are typically either four uh, hole mount or three hole mount with uh, supplied mounting screws in a triangular or square shape. Uh, most customers that are in oil and gas or power generation, chemical, of course have seen these sensors installed on their um, uh, rotating equipment that's used in high temperature applications uh, like turbines and compressors all the time. So um, very familiar sensor in the industry but a difficult one to test because of the um, uh, integral hardline cable and the weight hanging off the side of the shaker. Tough to test with a um, regular shaker table mounted in a lab, uh, maybe even a little more challenging with a portable unit. But with our portable vibration calibrator here from IMI Sensors, the 699A07, um, we can easily test this sensor and mitigate the effects of transverse motion using our quartz reference accelerometer, which is extremely stable. So what I'm going to do here is test an IMI sensors model EX600B13. This is a 100 millivolt per G model uh, capable of reaching 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. It has integral hardline cable um, and it, uh, connected to the charge amplifier here with a two pin mill output and that goes to the test sensor input on my portable calibrator. It's an ICP sensor so um, the portable calibrator can supply power to this sensor. It's part of IMI sensors UHT12, uh, PCB Piezotronics UHT12 sensor design, which offer versus competitive models, they offer superior temperature stability over a wide frequency range. They also offer um, uh, terrific uh, performance with the absence of uh, pyroelectric noise spikes, uh, which can occur from time to time. Many technicians have um, are very familiar with pyroelectric noise spikes on these transducers. This unique crystal design, trademarked by PCB Piezotronics, is, uh, is excellent at removing those noise spikes as well as giving terrific temperature stability. And finally, it has a shear mode element instead of a compression mode element, which prevents base strain uh, errors due to the, the base strain that may be induced by the strain um, on the sensors mounting by the motion of the machine itself or the flexing of the machine itself. So it's pretty interesting. Um, it's a huge step up in the uh, high temperature uh, sensor design world. But let's get on with it. Let's test this accelerometer uh, using an automated test that I've already programmed into the shaker table. So our first test point is operating right now at 100 hertz and 1G peak and you can see that my uh, output is 98 millivolts per G, uh, 99 millivolts per G, desired is 100, plus or minus 5% tolerance. So this sensor passes. And you can see the next screen here tells you that the sensor passes calibration because its output is 98.87 millivolts per G, which falls between the upper and lower bound of 105 to 95 millivolts per G. And we tested it at uh, 100 Hertz and one G peak. If I press file again, we go to the next test point, which is 50 hertz at 1G peak, and you can see I'm still at 99 millivolts per G. If I press file again, it tells me that I once again pass. The next test point is 30 hertz. Now you can see I'm moving relatively quickly. I give it a moment to settle. The shaker is, at, once again, I pass. The shaker is actually measuring the real motion from the quartz reference accelerometer that's inside the armature. There's no need to enter the mass of the sensor as you see it shaking now at 10 hertz. This is a very visible uh, speed and the uh, uh, sensor's output is 98 millivolts per G and we pass once again. Now you saw at 10 hertz we we're unable to generate uh, 1 G but we're able to reach uh, 0.8 G's at that test point. So 10 hertz is a little bit too slow to push the envelope all the way to 1 G with a portable shaker table. At 300 hertz, again we pass, and we are very stable here at uh, 98 millivolts per G. Pass again at 500, 
Next test point is 1000 Hz and we pass again. Right now we're conducting an ISO 16063 Part 21 compliant frequency response calibration and this is a NIST traceable portable shaker table. At 2000 Hz we pass. At 2500 Hz we pass. And there's only two test points to go. 3000 Hz pass and 3500 Hz we pass again. Well, It'll tell me when I hit the button. 3500 hertz, we pass at 104 millivolts per G as we start to approach the sensor's resonance here. Now that we've completed the test, we can save the record to memory by pressing file two more times. I could enter the serial number if I'd like. I'd rather do that on the keyboard. Now, to export the test and actually create an ISO 16063 Part 21 compliant calibration certificate, all we need to do is insert the USB, rotate the file button until we see tools, open the USB menu, and it's going to read the USB and offer us a choice of copy or move. And we're going to choose move if we want to erase the records from memory, or we can choose copy to keep the records on the memory of both the calibrator and the USB. So I'm going to go ahead and copy. I like to copy uh, rather than move, and then I can erase the records from the memory of the calibrator when I'm done creating my calibration certificates. So now I can remove the USB from the drive and we can create that ISO 16063 compliant calibration certificate NIST traceability in Microsoft Excel with three clicks of the mouse and there's no need for any additional software other than Microsoft Excel. Once the calibration data is exported from the memory of the portable vibration calibrator onto the supplied USB, we can create the calibration certificate with no additional software, no software licenses. This is done in Microsoft Excel. So if I click on the USB disk, you can see here in my computer um, what we have. We have the report generation workbook that is supplied, and we also have a folder called calrecords underscore PVC, and this is where the raw data, the comma-separated value files uh, are exported to from the portable vibration calibrator. And you can see that I've exported seven files on May 17th at uh, 16.52 or 4.52. From here, uh, that, that raw data is not terribly important. What we want to do is click on the report generation workbook. This is a Microsoft Excel macro enabled template and if it's the first time you're opening it, um, it will give you a drop down bar right in this area here that's yellow that asks you if you want to enable macros and you click yes. From there we import data from file, click on the calibration record that we wish to create and hit our raw data comes in and now we can hit view certificate. You can see that we, your eyes first go to the deviation plot. Our percent deviation from sensitivity at reference is calculated here and displayed in this graphical format. Uh, if you've ever looked at a calibration certificate from PCB, Piezotronics, or another vendor, this should look familiar for an accelerometer. And the frequency is displayed on the bottom axis. Our model number automatically comes in. The sensitivity at 100 hertz is shown here and the test level of 1G is also shown. Data table shows the percent deviation at each frequency from the calculated sensitivity at reference, which again is up here. Our notes give our NIST traceability and PTB project numbers. It also notes that this is a back-to-back -back comparison per the ISO standard 16063 part 21, the serial number and firmware version of the calibrator itself. The rest of the cells, um, other than data, so if I click on data, I cannot modify any of these cells, and that's what makes this sheet ISO 17025 compliant. So I can't accidentally manipulate any of my data uh, on the left-hand side. Uh, we can enter our serial number, of course the manufacturer. Uh, we could give an ID number or a location or a description of the sensor. We can also enter any of the transducer specifications here uh, at the top right. We have an area for user notes. It's a completely user-definable field. And you have a bunch of lines here to enter any notes you would like. 
or um, if you're performing this calibration for a customer of yours you can note the name of your customer here of course if you're doing this for your own sensor um, you could probably leave that blank as found this unit was in tolerance and as left it's also in tolerance we can enter the name of the technician here and I'll self approve my calibration uh, the calibration date and time appear here which is also critical to ISO 17025 compliance and we can enter a due date if we'd like here or leave it blank and that's the calibration certificate from here we can um, save it I would recommend saving as a PDF and storing to a secure location or printing it so you could just click here and save as a PDF rename the file um, anything you would like put the part number here EX 600 B 13 and so on and once we're complete there we can move on to the next record if we'd like we can we don't have to close the sheet we can go back to frequency data hit import again and choose our next record and create a certificate thanks again for watching be sure to contact us if you require technical support on the proper mounting adapters as we offer uh, mounting adapters that accommodate nearly every high temperature vibration sensor in the field, both three and four hole mounts. Also be sure to check out PCB Piezotronics new UHT12 high temperature designs, accelerometer designs with superior uh, stability over a wide temperature range and the elimination of pyroelectric spiking. The portable vibration calibrator comes with an A2LA accredited calibration certificate. It also has this handy output for the monitor reference output, so if at any time you wish to check the stability of the reference accelerometer, you can do so with a simple voltmeter. Thanks again for watching, and be sure to check out our website for more videos.